The Essential Mix. Hi, this is Pete Tong, continuing with the exclusive Carl Cox Travelogs for the Essential Mix. This week he visits the spiritual home of house music, Chicago. This is where the first house music club, The Warehouse, featuring DJ Frankie Knuckles, started what is now a global movement. With interviews from some of the pioneers of those halcyon days, plus those responsible for picking up the baton for the future, we keep the rhythm flowing via Carl's set at the Metro, recorded on Independence Day, July the 4th. magazine and we're based out of Chicago and we've been publishing for about four years covering the electronic music world and culture as it appears and grows in the United States. It's uh, something that's been very, very popular for a long time in England and many parts of Europe and is just really now exploding here in the United States. So that's what we're trying to cover and get out to the people in America. A thousand words. We're, we're very aware of the English culture, the DJ culture, and how it's affected the rest of the world's culture. We're very, very aware of DJs and artists like Sasha and Digweed and uh, Carl Cox, who we just had in town over the 4th of July weekend. And Carl's always a great draw, being you know, acclaimed as the world's greatest DJ and is definitely one of the world's greatest DJs. And it's always a great time here in Chicago, and people are always, always totally jacked up about going to see Carl every time he comes. Well, House Music basically started in Chicago and uh, was first released through many labels, one of the, the largest of which was DJ International, which I had the pleasure and honor of working at a little bit earlier in this decade. Uh, that was the label where records like Marshall Jefferson's Move Your Body and uh, Steve Silk Hurley's Jack Your Body came from. And these were just two of the many records that helped launch a, a global explosion, which is still being felt today. Well, the impact of those records was was huge. And, and for example, Steve Silk Hurley's Jack Your Body was a number one in England, which just goes to show how huge the impact was at that time. Um, is a concept that's become very popular and, and has 
become very established in England, and it's something that uh, originated in the United States, particularly in Chicago and New York at about the same time, and people will probably argue over when and who and where until the end of time, but uh, it, it was started in, in the United States, and it was a way originally for the DJs to get their hands on the dance product, which was kind of hard to get a hold of because there weren't too many specialty shops in the beginning that carried the vinyl and catered to the DJs, so the record pools became um, basically the most important and heavily impactive street-level promotion that the dance music world could have asked for in the United States. And now, 20 years later, it's, it's an institution that uh, really drives the industry in the United States, as well as elsewhere. Got, you've got your very established mix shows, you've got your essential one, and um, it exposes the mixes and the music to the masses over the airwaves. In America, we have our mix shows, which uh, some DJs will put together their mixes, and they might get played late at night, or they might be on some smaller college station, which doesn't have a large coverage area. But in general terms, America really doesn't have any dance radio whatsoever. It's just absolutely ignored and uh, not given any respect whatsoever. It never really has been. So as a result, the music is still kept underground, and it still gets out there uh, through some of the radio stations, the smaller stations, like I said. But um, in the larger scheme of things, there's no respect for dance music or electronic music, for that matter, in, in American radio. It's horrible and pathetic. As a result, what has happened is dance music and electronic music and house have stayed a little bit on the underground tip. It's become a word of mouth thing, friends turning friends on to stuff, reading the trade magazines and the smaller fanzines that pop up in every region across the country. And it's a form of music that obviously can't be denied. It makes its way onto the turntables of every nightclub and every large or small city in America. And that's primarily the way that the music lives and breathes here. of house music in Chicago right now, as I see it, is, is more promising than it's been since maybe the, the first global explosion that happened in the early DJ International days. There's more talent in the city now, producer-wise and as far as DJ talent-wise, than maybe has ever been here. And also what's happened is 
House music has gone through a few generations here. It's been around in Chicago for over 20 years now, and we've been through all the mistakes that can happen. Everything that could possibly happen in the music industry has happened to house music, and what's happened is these guys have learned their lessons, and they've learned how to do business, and they've learned from all the mistakes that have been made in the past, and what they're doing now is becoming an industry that really is truly independent and can fend for itself against the larger industry that really drives America and keeps the independent scene from thriving. So what you have here is another Chicago house explosion that's about to happen. And it's not just going to be from Chicago to England and back. It's going to go from one end of the planet to the other, I believe. And that's what's going to happen next. You guys will be hearing it probably before anybody else will, too. American DJs that are up and coming, specifically from Chicago. Of course, you want to keep your eyes on Derek Carter. He is the undisputed king of Chicago at the moment. And Mark Grant runs a very close second. This guy's crew is just so steamy and so sexy that you can't help but move. Um, some of the other people coming out, Javon Jackson is a huge name to watch for, and DJ Heather absolutely wrecked shop in Miami at the Winter Music Conference this year, had people throwing their arms up in the air and screaming, and if you guys get a chance to see her, make sure you miss work the next day, whatever you have to do, DJ Heather is going to kill you. especially somebody to watch out for. She's starting to do some production and she's starting to get booked all over the world as a DJ. She's uh, very true to the Chicago style. She could be called some sort of maybe ambassadoress or um, godmother of house possibly. When you hear her, when you see her, it's a, it's a total experience. There's three turntables, there's acapellas over funky bass lines and minimal drumming and it's, it's Chicago house absolutely the way it's meant to be heard. And uh, you will definitely be hearing more of her soon. Keep your eyes out for her.
Derek Carter, and you listen to The Essential Mix with Carl Cox, live from Chicago.
amount of years I've been involved in house music in Chicago since the mid to late 80s. I've worked and managed the likes of Jamie Principal, Steve So Curly, E. Smooth, Maurice Joshua, Mike Dunn, M. Doc, Byron Stingley, all the greats, all the big names. It's tough being in house music or in the dance industry, period, in Chicago, it's tough being a woman, but when you got a pair of balls like this, you can make it, you can survive. And like busting balls too, that's even better. House music came out of Chicago because Frankie Knuckles, he basically had the ability when he was DJing to, he would play a beat, a drum beat, over the record that he was playing, and he introduced digital drums to the analog disco sound. It was, um, it was an extremely new concept. People were losing their minds. I mean, it was almost like a magical experience to go hear Frankie Knuckles spin or Ron Hardy in later days. Um, they would they had the the ability to capture the crowd and to inject more of like a soulful and spiritual experience to the club going one it it became almost religion it became almost like a religious revival you had people from all walks of life in the club um it transcended all racial barriers all social economic sexual it, it didn't matter it didn't matter who you were where you were from at that moment everybody was one everybody was feeling the spirit at that moment and it was a very unifying thing and when you had that many people with such a deep spiritually shared experience all they could do was talk about it more and more to people so the next thing you know you know the week after would be bigger than the one prior and so on and so on and so on until people would start traveling from other places to try and come to the warehouse to try and hear frankie to try and experience the magic to try and and feel what it was that everyone was telling them about open-mindedness that existed in the house music scene in the early days with Frankie about accepting people from all walks of life and being so open to everyone and everything, um, especially the digital sounds that Frankie was using at the time, has led us up until today, where someone like Carl Cox, using his techno house sound, is going to just blow the roof in Chicago tonight. It's a sold-out crowd. I mean, people are going to be standing in line. It's just, it's a huge event here. And it just goes to show how, from something that happened in the early to mid 80s, it spawned a revolution. And just like anything huge, it has to keep evolving. And it's evolved to where it is today, to where Carl Cox can come to Chicago and rule the city on one of the biggest nights in America, 4th of July Independence Day. Just as a footnote, I find it extremely ironic that on the birthday of our nation, we're dancing to a British DJ. And the reason we have this holiday is because we kicked your asses to get our independence. You know, I have to say, the Brits, you guys should be extremely thankful and extremely grateful for 
the radio that you have there that supports the music and the culture and puts it in the forefront and doesn't just feature it for an hour a week in some half-assed mix show like they do here in America. And especially in the home of house music, it's embarrassing to say that we don't have radio that supports this form of music. We have people in positions of power that look down upon it, don't consider it a real form of music and use it as just kind of a filler. Like for an hour a week, at the end of the week, um, you know, they'll throw us a bone and say, okay, here's one of your house mixes and I'll be happy. And so it's extremely ironic that here in our own home, we can't get the support, the basic support that is given all around the world, especially in the UK. The UK was the first to embrace house music. They were the first people to open their arms to everybody from Chicago. Marshall Jefferson, Farley, Fast Eddie, um, Adonis, Jamie Principal, people of that sort were icons in the UK and went completely unrecognized over here in Chicago, especially as far as radio is concerned. It's been an uphill battle. It's been quite a struggle to get radio to give any sort of credibility to this form of music, to give it any sort of respect. And so, in my opinion, the UK gets the utmost respect from me for really embracing this form of music, for really looking at it for what it was and understanding it and giving so many of us involved in the scene a future and a career and someone to look forward to hearing our music. So many times I've heard various producers say, I can't wait till they get a hold of this in the UK, knowing that you guys would appreciate it the way that the producers intended it to be appreciated would. So um, we thank you a lot for that. We still kicked your ass in the war, but we still thank you for that though.
are listening to Carl Cox on the Essential Mix Show in Chicago. Yo, this is Georgie Porgy from the Music Plant. Welcome to the home of house music, Chicago. To give you guys a little background on who Georgie Porgy is, Georgie Porgy is an artist, remixer, producer. They had hits such as Everybody in My Party, Let the Music Pop You Up. We've remixed people such as Michael Jackson, Dina Carroll, and the list goes on. House music. Let's talk about it for a second. Thank God it's back. It's been here in Chicago going strong for a long, long time. For a while there, we got backed into a corner with the Speed Garage stuff, but we've been able to come back, and uh, we've actually got Speed Garage back in the cupboard, <laughs> and uh, it's coming back in the big vocal records, and uh, the plans for the music plant, which is, includes Richard Rogers, Kim Sims, uh, y'all remember Kim, Too Blind to See It, she's back with us, Terry Hunter, uh, UBQ Project, GT Express, we've got a lot of groups coming out, a lot of songs. And we're going back to the soul. We're bringing back... Actually, this is why we started a new label called Vinyl Soul, which will be through Music Plant, because we're putting the soul back into vinyl. It's all going to be about real vocal records again and songs and stuff you can sing along to with big, big backgrounds and, you know, just great songs with a lot of energy. I hope to take house music beyond the millennium. And it's just an incredible thing and to be a part of an experience like this, which started back in the days with Jack Your Body and Move Your Body and, you know, and the chippies like this and stuff like that. And to be standing here today and to be able to talk to everybody out there who have supported house music and have grown up with it and it's been a part of their life, it's uh, something else. It's a, it's a blessing is what it is.
Yo, what's up, Carl Cox, man? This city ain't, ain't big enough for the both of us. You come in my town on the same night that I'm playing, we ain't having it, but it's all love. Yo, this is Terry Hunter from the home of house music, Shout town Basically, I'm a DJ. I've been DJing for about 13 years. I play all over the world. Um, we started the night here on Saturday with Barbara Tucker, uh, the Underground Network, which is going once a month. I'm the resident there. Uh, Barbara Tucker's known for doing the Underground Network thing in New York with Louis Vega. And basically, we just making it happen, bringing the soulful music back to the forefront. We trying to get more vocal records recognized instead of a lot of instrumental techno stuff. House music in Chicago to me is uh, Frankie Knuckles, Ron Hardy. Those were the guys that were big influences back in the days when, when the music was coming about. It came up with a lot of the disco music, um, which is now being sampled by everybody in the business. Those were the hits back in the days that made us you know, believe in the music. The, the, the name house music comes from, a lot of people probably heard uh, the warehouse, which is in Chicago, that uh, Frankie Knuckles used to DJ at. And um, we're just trying to bring it back. Myself, uh, Georgie Porgy, we got Music Plant, Final Soul Records, which is a label that is strictly staying true to underground music. And when I say underground, I mean house music, soulful songs and instrumental tracks. And we're trying to make it happen again. Hi, this is Brian from Gramophone Records of Chicago. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the history of Chicago and house music as it is today and the past. Here at Gramophone, we carry a large selection of urban dance music, anywhere from hip-hop to acid jazz to house to breakbeat and drum and bass. And all of our staff here is pretty, pretty much knowledgeable in a lot of uh, genres of music, at least more than one. And um, most of us here are DJs. Uh, classic, classic records and um, house as well. Uh, it's a big, big part of the store. You're listening to Carl Cox on the Essential Mix from Chicago.
weekends we have uh, house events that go on in some of the, the clubs in uh, Chicago, some of the more pres prestigious clubs that have been around. Uh, Metro and Smart Bar, there's Karma. In fact, at, Met at Smart Bar tonight, there are DJs uh, Derek Carter, Jesse De La Pena, Mike Dunn, Mel Hammond. Uh, these are all high-caliber DJs that do a really good job of entertaining people and keep the dance floor alive with energy out there. And Derek Carter is actually somebody I met a long, long time ago when I was really into getting myself into mixing. And I met this guy at a record store called Imports, etc. He used to be one of Chicago's leading house uh, authorities as well. Ground phones actually been on the map a lot longer, many, many, many years. And Derek actually started working over here. And throughout the years, I've known him. He's, he's been a big help and inspiration to me as well. And his knowledge of music is just incredible. It goes around the world. It's, it doesn't stop just with house. Um, goes with anywhere from down tempo to disco, house music. Uh, uh, I've also known him to play a little hip hop in the past, also when he was doing more mobiles and things like that. But he's a very talented guy, real personable as well. Um, Jesse De La Pena is another DJ from Chicago, very prestigious and definitely has a wide knowledge of music and is very, very, he, he, he sends a lot of enthusiasm out there when he performs because he does more than just bring one record in and take another one out. He does a lot of turntable trickery and his knowledge of music is just incredible. It's like jazz and Latin stuff and, you know, you always get something fresh and new. As far as I can say with Mike Dunn, he's one of the uh, old pioneers and producers from Chicago. He's made a lot of uh, famous tracks like Magic Feet and Dance Your Mother and uh, some West Bam Records and guys, uh, very good DJ as well. I'm sure at Metro tonight or Smart Bar will be like seriously packed and you know just jumping and people will be having a good time as usual. I can't remember flat one time I've had a bad time at Smart Bar actually. In my own opinion, as far as the amount or um, how should I say the venues, we, we just don't. Ha I don't feel like we have enough. Chicago has more than a lot of talent that's not known about as well, and people are starting to come more out in the map, and people travel out more out of town and. It's incredible. Some of the DJs that I know are uh, pretty versatile themselves, and that's one thing I tell them, you know, don't stop with, you know, just what the norm tells you, you know, take it to another level, because DJing is an art, and, you know, it's what you make it. Let me just talk about Paul Johnson for a minute. He's a DJ and producer, long time from Chicago, and has actually been from the old school scene of... Um, Disco Days as well, Ron Hardy and Frankie Knuckles, and he uh, produces a lot of, uh, let me say, ghetto tracks and some underground house music as well. And he, uh, I like his style because he's, he's pretty versatile, and there's a little something that he has out there for almost any house DJ and possibly some of the trans DJs as well if they, you know, got into using that kind of stuff. It's got a new single coming out in the UK. It's Get Get Down. It's real hot. It's going to be a movie smash. And uh, Paul just keeps putting them out. He's like nonstop and he's always hard work and always, has, always likes to have a good time also. Real smiley guy.
One of the biggest clubs in Chicago is Crowbar, um, actually known as Glee Club. And main DJs down there are Terry Bristol, Psycho Bitch, and Kurt Karras. And basically what they play there really is a lot of trance and progressive house. And lately they've been a little bit versatile and bringing in some uh, more underground DJs such as Gene Ferris, uh, Derek Carter, um, Josh Werner. Well, actually, Josh plays more techno, though. And he's pretty versatile as well. He plays some house stuff with his set. places that play more than just house music as well. Uh, we've got our hip-hop nights some places uh, like the Double Door and uh, Mad Bar, Monday Night, which they, they play more drum and bass and they mix it with hip-hop and some of the unusual and norm. And we've got open mic session there and um, MCs can um, express their poetic skills over microphone, DJs breaking beats down, stuff like that. And uh, that's really cool. I like to see more stuff like that. I just wish it could be more for people that are like, you know, 18 and older, you know, so expose it to more, uh, more of the people out there that really like starving for this music instead of just having to go to a rave. And it's really hard to get a venue in Chicago where we could do that and have it go after a certain hour. And as it is, a lot of the bars are, are only 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And only a few venues right now hold a 5 o'clock and beyond license. It's really tough because our mayor of the city doesn't seem to appreciate what us as DJs are really into and doesn't really advocate it because he believes that it just draws a lot of violence and unnecessary conflict. So, you know, it's it's really tough, but we, you know, do the best we can with what we have out there and then usually have a good time. I, I prefer personally to go out on the weekend days because it's more calm and more relaxed and you know I'm not the kind of person that likes to get all dressy and uh, I'm just not into that kind of thing you know I, I like to have a good time and party or whatever but you know I, I go out to a venue or any place and pay a cover charge I like to hear good music and I like to be surprised I don't like to hear the normal stuff and the same thing over and over to, you know that kind of thing can, can really bore a person that's why I don't listen to radio normally but Karma is also another huge club in Chicago and I was there Thursday night with um, Little Louis Vega Ted Patterson and Tony Humphreys came down and DJ'd and Tony Humphreys is actually uh, a big inspiration in my life with uh, old R&B dance music from the 80s and such as Prelude Records and such forth, uh, independent labels, like really, really good cut. Uh, one of my favorite cuts that he remixed was Future Feeling Hot, it's 1982 cut. And um, it just goes back with me that that far. So dance music has evolved so much, and it's gone through its its phases, and it's gone through its high points, and I believe it's gone definitely gone through a lot of its low points in some cases as well. In Chicago, and at, over here at Gramophone, I don't think there's anything that we couldn't find for an individual that's into listening to really good dance music and mixtapes or uh, CDs. We've got it all down here for you and specialize in a, in a lot of the, uh, the underground stuff that's out there. Let's <laughs> go. 
listening to The Essential Mix on Radio 1.
listening to the Central Mix on Radio 1. London, uh, lucky enough to be in Chicago at the moment, played a badass club on Sunday, Metro, uh, screaming crowd of great people, um, last night, Monday, went to a place called Red Dog, uh, which is my game since pretty much uh, when house started in Chicago, maybe a few years after it started, but nine, ten years, and for me, you know, it was a, an experience that I'll always remember because it truly encapsulated what Chicago house music is all about. You know, what Chicago's given to the dance scene, what it means to people, uh, you know, from the founding fathers like Frankie Knuckles, and Tyree Cooper and Adonis, Joey Principal, all those sort of people, uh, to the new school like Sneak and Cashmere, you know, Terry Mullen, you know, they've been, uh, there's a spirit in Chicago that, you know, isn't found anywhere else in the world. And, you know, the Red Dog really summed up for me in that. It was a, a unique mixture of people of every creed, colour, sexual denomination, gay, lesbian, black, white, green, Chinese, whatever. But uh, what they were doing was, you know, the whole thing with... There was no preconceptions, no contempt, no hate, no war. Just, you know, just... Uh, I know it sounds a cliche, but, you know, just love and uh, just everybody's partying, they're crying, they're screaming, they're laughing and uh, for me that's what Chicago has been about and, and what it's given to the, the dance scene is that it's the spirit of freedom, the spirit to express yourself through music, through dance and uh, it's something that everyone, you know, should try and experience and try and get on with, you know, it's, uh, it's a special thing and house is a feeling, as someone once said. The more I think about Chicago and the sort of what's associated with it, and you, you look back at some of the labels that have come out and some of the labels that are still going, you know, from you know the early thing of like tracks, which you know had you know, one of them for one of my old, my all-time favourite records, Frankie Knuckles, Your Love, which uh, is was always I just always remember it being at a big orbital rave and somebody playing that record across the uh, the field. Another track which. Uh, I think will surprise a lot of people because of where it came from, but where it got to what was that, uh, Steve Silver Hurley, Jackie Body, which everybody knows. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it came from the you know, deepest urban parts of you know, this early Chicago housing and uh, eventually became a number one in England. So, you know, I think that's, uh, that sums up in one way how the, the spirit and the passion, the feeling of Chicago house music can transcend just you know, it's a local neighbourhood and it's a worldwide thing. And, you know, even to this day, you know, it's, if you look at someone like Armand Van Helden, who isn't actually from Chicago, but the, the sound that he's producing is almost like a new Chicago sound that Sneak started two, three years ago. And he's made that now into, uh, you know, along with people like Daft Punk, into a, you know, a worldwide pop phenomenon. So is Chicago still saying it? And uh, I think we'll continue to do so, judging what I saw last night with the spirit and the freedom of the crowd.
this is Derek Carter talking to you live from Chicago, sitting in a chair that I sat in more than 100 times, relaxing after the show. We just saw Carl Cox play. Tight, tight. It was the hot party, but it was tight. I missed Jim, though, but the rest of it was all right. And now we're backstage, imbibing, having a few drinks, a couple of puffs on something or other. And it's just a Sunday. It's Independence Day, you know. We've had a lovely celebration of our country's independence from another certain country. And <laughs> it's been rather nice. We grilled today. I was waiting for you to call because we like we had a, a spread set out like because we have a balcony and a back deck and a patio at our place and a jacuzzi. So we just had a lovely like it was Sunday. And you missed it. You missed it all. It was a really good day. It was a nice day. Hot. Very hot, and then, you know, just trailed off into the evening. Popped down here, about 2 o'clock. Got a couple hours of madness in. Where is Chicago and how's going? It's going forward. I mean, there's a lot of new kids coming out. There's a lot of, like, sort of interesting new styles. The kids are rocking around here. There's, like, a lot of heart. A lot of heart coming around. You know, just people feeling the need to you know, express themselves to show what they got and do their thing. And that's cool. I mean, that can only be, that can only be good for things here. Especially, like, with it being the whole home of it all or whatever, the alleged home of it, you know. But in in, in some respects, in in a lot of respects it is. But, I mean, you know, it owes just as much to other places as as anything else. I mean, it, you know, it's it's home to a certain style of things, a certain way of things. But, you know, the, 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 there's still always been a bit of cross pollination, especially with like Detroit being only 45 minutes away on the thump, you know, across the water, you get on a plane and, you know, kids come back and forth all the time. New York is an hour and 20 minutes by plane. So it's like, you know, we're, nothing is very far. UPS and Federal Express have been gone for a long time, so kids just get records sent in and, I mean, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's moving in a good direction though. I mean, in, in all reality, it's, it's kind of hard to say because I'm not here as much as I used to be, so I don't get to catch as much of it as I'd like to. But what I do see is is a very, very positive nod towards something that I think is growing in a very, very nice way. I mean, it's not like going shit or like going in a bad direction. It's not just taking on some sort of pompous, arrogant, kind of like hyped up road. It's just, it's nicing. It's very nice. And, and I'm glad to see it. I mean, I'm glad when I can come back and, you know, find out uh, two more new clubs open and there's more places for people to go out and hear things. I'm glad when I can come back and find out that there's kids just like, you know, uh, so-and-so beat it at this party and it just it went off and everything is cool. I'm like, yeah, all right, you know. Good to know that even though you're gone, like somebody's carrying the torch. Am I doing music wise? Working on music. Remixes, some new stuff. I got a um I got a new EP coming out on Classic, which is uh a, a, an interesting melange, a nice mix of things. And I've just been working on a lot of different things, like some vocal projects that for I sing again. Cause that's something my mom always kinda you know, she paid for voice lessons. She wants to see some use in it. You know, she wants to see her her baby do something. So, I mean, I do a bunch of things. Though. I've got two remixes on the go now at the house that I just took a break from to come down to, you know, see what was happening down here. But lots of things. I mean, working with my roommates. I'm my roommates. We have, we have, I've got two roommates and there's a studio in every room. So there's always something on the hoof at our house. And like, you know, I pop in here and we share ideas and like pop in there and like, huh, oh, that's cool. If how are you, I'd whatever, whatever, you know, make suggestions and revamp things and just having fun, working on music and, and it's summer.
listening to the Essential Mix on Radio One.
name is Dominic Siciliano. And tonight, tomorrow night I'm going to go see Carl Cox at the Metro because he's a big, bad... Mm -hmm. Hello, and, uh, my name is Antomico, and uh, tomorrow night I'm going to go see na, na Carol and the Cox, because he's not a rock, rock in the house I like a nobody know. And, uh, you know, when I when I think of the Carol Cox, I put them, my hands up in the air and I say, hey, ho, hey, and you, you want to know something? And twink, 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 twink. Music in uh, Chicago is so good because it, 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 it's where the house music was uh, born. You know what I'm saying? And swing, 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 swing. All right, my name is Dominique Siciliano, and I'm going to see Carl Cox at the Metro in Chicago tomorrow night. Let me tell you something about Carl Cox. The man throws down. He's a big, bad mother. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, house music in Chicago. Why it's so dear to me. Well, number one, because it's born here. Number two, because I'm connected with one of the most major independent record labels in Chicago, which is Music Plant, who puts out nothing but the hits constantly. Anything you desire will come out of this house. Georgie Porgy, Terry Hunter, Xavier Joshua, uh, everybody. I mean, just just unbelievable. Uh, Frankie Knuckles is from Chicago. Who else we got in Chicago? Everybody. Everybody. Many thanks to Carl Cox for his fascinating insight to the home of house music, Chicago. As usual, you can find a full track listing of Carl's mix on the Radio 1 website and listed in the next editions of Mix Mag 7 and Music Magazines. Next week sees the debut of Leo and Bushwhacker on the Essential Mix. Until then, stay tuned to Radio 1 with Annie Nightingale all the way through to 6.30 a.m. The Essential Mix. 99.99 Radio 1.